In a demented age of darkness and suffering, human depravity is harnessed for total war. The sacrifice of the self is a linchpin in imperial modes of thinking. To throw yourself upon enemy arms is the act of a virtuous subject of the emperor on earth. To offer up limb and life in combat or labor is an honorable deed that makes that life worth having been lived in the first place. To give up yourself and your offspring and kin is a praiseworthy contribution to the cause of the species and its divine lord on terror. For the blood of martyrs is the seed of the Imperium, and as long as men, women and children are prepared to cast themselves onto death for the God Emperor, his domains will endure across the stars. Great empires are not maintained by timidity, and so the Imperium of Man have long since ceased hesitating over plunging the worst depths of immorality in pursuit of its costly triumphs. Victory must be won at any price, and the survival of mankind as a whole is dependent on its overlord's callous disregard for human life and dignity. Man, after all, is nothing but yet another resource to expend in order to uphold imperial power. Man on his own is nothing. Man exists to serve. He is naught but a number in a broken calculation of increased input to bolster a decrepit galactic civilization with feet of clay. The human bombs of the penal legions are but one of countless examples of the extreme measures which the Imperium of Man employs on a regular basis. Albeit the practice was originally born out of desperation in half-forgotten millennia of the early Imperium, it has long since solidified into a standard weapon system of the Astra Militarum. Among the convicted criminals filling the ranks of the penal legions are to be found sinners whose crimes can never truly be repented in their lifetimes. Those are felons who have violated and tortured others and are ridden by intense emotions of regret and insane repentance over what they have done. Among these doomed humans, many are psychotic and suicidal and will often grasp any chance to earn the Emperor's forgiveness through death in battle. Once identified, such men and women of damnation are immediately recruited into the human bomb squads where they can seek redemption for their sins. Members of the Adeptus Ministorum will guide these lost souls in meditation and prayer to make them understand what they must do to receive his full forgiveness. Before battle, lay tech men will equip the penal legionnaires with a bomb harness and arm the explosives, while preachers or confessors utter liturgies and blessings. The human bombs make the sign of the Aquila and press triggers of igniters in a grip which only death will cease. Absolution is at hand. Only once the harness is detonated will the soul of the redeemed sinner be forgiven and welcome to join the side of the God Emperor in peace. And so, Imperial Guard commanders will employ suicide bombers in deadly situations on the battlefield such as to clear the breaches of the foe's fortifications or counteract enemy infantry possessing superior size and armor to lowly guardsmen. These living explosives are a potent tool in the Imperial arsenal and have often won the Astra Militarum the element of surprise against hostiles for which such tactics would be unthinkable, such as long-lost human colonists or the naive Tau upstarts on the eastern fringe. Human life is the true currency of the Imperium. And what great difference is there between ordering tens of millions of soldiers to advance into the jaws of certain death with a gun in their hand and transforming them into human bombs? Aren't we all awaiting our chance to sacrifice ourselves for our species and lord? For is not a death that serve the Imperium usefully a benign mercy to repentant sinners? It is better to die for the Emperor than to live for yourself. Aside from innumerable improvised solutions, there exist a number of standard template construct, STC, patterns of bomb harnesses. All of these are of crude make 
and stand as testament to such far-fetched contingency armaments having been originally designed by ancient, abominable intelligences to aid their human colonists only in the most desperate of circumstances. What once was almost only a theoretical emergency situation back in the dark age of technology has since become standard fare in the grim darkness of the far future. And so, the age of Imperium grinds on, its rusting machinery greased by human sweat and blood. Thus on 10,000 battlefields, on distant worlds, the voice of the damned ring out, eager to redeem their baleful sins and find forgiveness in death. As bombs are locked onto flesh, those voices ring out as one, its battle cry stark and fervent, its message that of the true fanatic, its words the very essence of the future of our species, for the Emperor.